Welcome to our review on osmosis. So what we've already looked at then is the idea of diffusion. And osmosis is very similar, just a little bit more specialized. So whenever we're talking about osmosis, the definition we've got to remember for this is that osmosis is the movement of water from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration across a partially permeable membrane. Now normally you'll get two marks for that, one for that first section about moving from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration, and the second mark is we're talking about the partially permeable membrane. So these particles are still moving down a concentration gradient, but remember it's only water that we're talking about with osmosis. Again, we're talking about a passive process, and when we mention this partially permeable membrane, we're referring to one that has these small pores in it, that are only going to allow certain molecules through. So what we tend to find is in the diagram in the bottom left there, you can see that the pores are small so that the water can pass through, but the sugar is too big. So obviously partially permeable because sugar can't pass through it, but the water can. We need to understand then what happens in plant cells as a result of this osmosis. So what we're gonna look at are three different scenarios here. First of all, if we consider putting our plant cell into a less concentrated solution than the cell contents. So that tells us we've got a higher concentration of water outside the cell than inside it. Now, if we do that, what happens is our water moves from the area of high water concentration, the solution, to the area of low water concentration inside the cell. So what we find is water's moving into that cell and that's going to increase the turga pressure. So what we actually find is that the cell becomes very firm or turgid, and that's what gives our plant support. If we consider our middle picture there, we can see that we've got the same concentration in our surroundings as in the cell contents. So what we see as a result there is that the cell remains the same. Water will enter the cell at the same rate as it leaves it. The third and final one on the right hand side there is where we're going to put our cell into a more concentrated solution than the cell contents. So what we find there is that there is a lower concentration of water in the solution than inside the cell. So as a result of that, the water moves from the area of high concentration inside the cell to the area of low water concentration outside the cell and therefore our cell loses water. So this leads to a decrease in mass in those experiments you may have done with potato and so forth. So as a result of this, the turga pressure falls and the cell becomes flaccid. So that basically means we get our plants wilting when we don't water them. If we let that continue and our cell contents collapse away from the cell wall, then we have what's called a plasmalized cell. And that's what you see in that diagram there where everything is pulled away from the cell wall that's a plasmalized cell. Finally, we need to consider what happens with our animal cells. So what we've got in a diagram there is our red blood cell. And again, we can look at it in three different scenarios. So first one on the left hand side there is we're going to place our actual red blood cells in a solution which are less concentrated than the cell contents. So that means they've got a higher concentration of water in the surroundings than inside the cell. As a result of that, water is going to move into those cells. And what we then see is it's going to swell up and it may actually end up bursting. And that process is called lysis. If we put our red blood cells into a solution that's got the same concentration as inside, then what we see is that there's no net movement of water. The same amount enters as leaves. So the cell remains the same. And on the right hand side, we see our third scenario where the surroundings are a more concentrated solution. So that means they've got a lower water concentration than inside the cell. And as a result of that, water moves from the high concentration inside the cell to the lower water concentration outside the cell. And therefore, we're going to lose that water. And the result of that is something called crenation. So the cell crinkles up, basically.